Good morning to all of you. Thanks for the organizers of Raw Inmate 2019 to invite me to give a speech for the conference. Today I am going to speak about functional disorders and homeopathy. Why functional disorders and homeopathy are very relevant for the medical treatment of patients is something very important which we need to evaluate. And functional disorders are medical conditions that impairs normal functioning of bodily process. They remain largely undetected under examination and investigations. As they remain elusive within the structural framework of biomolecular medicine, conventional physicians offers only symptomatic relief. And that too, conventional doctors fail in majority of cases and there is a constant tendency to refer the cases to psychiatrist. But homeopathy has an inbuilt advantage in this type of conditions. Being holistic in its approach to the patient, homeopathy can offer a radical cure for patients without much complexities. So here one thing comes very relevant, that is the nanopharmacology of homeopathy and the concept of similia similibus curenter and its integration to the epigenetics of human existence. So, when you interact these two areas together, the nanopharmacology, its epigenetic modification and also the principle of similia similibus curander, it gives sudden and radical cure in functional disorders. Let me begin with three cases in short. And after that cases, we will go forward and see the reasoning behind why homeopathy is much superior in the treatment of functional disorders. So, the case number one, it is a very interesting patient, which I treated very recently. It is a 55 year old male patient who reported to reported on me on 12-7-2019 and he was suffering for last one month with consistent and persistent violent hiccup. Initially one week it was moderate. For the last three weeks it was very severe and he was admitted in the hospital because of the intensity of the disease growing he was admitted in the intensive care unit for the last one week. He had painful hiccup because of the intensity and the continuation of the hiccup patient was under sedation in the last 5-6 days. In this period a complete investigation was done for the patient including CBC, urine, ultrasonogram of abdomen, whole body MRI, CSF analysis. So, every possible investigation has been done and there was no positive clinically detected pathology in the patient. And he had no history of cough, wheezing, vomiting or no erectations. Finally, the doctors decided, the physicians decided to take a bone marrow biopsy as they started suspecting there is a possibility of leukemia. Here we can feel the patients and his family's anxieties, fear and the loss of hope. So, patient was in ICU and the patient's relatives approached me, is there anything can be done with homeopathy because the complete treatment of the last one month was a failure. I could not see the patient directly. I interacted with the relatives because patient was in ICU and I did not visit the patient directly. I collected some of the informations and I asked them, yes definitely there is something we can do with homeopathic drugs. So, after gathering the information, I decided to give the patient Natrum Muriaticum 10M. Natrum Muriaticum 10M, 4 doses are given in 1 hour interval. The first dose was given on 9 am morning and the second dose was given on 10 am morning on 13 7 2019. The prescription was based on the repertorial concept that is if you go to Kent's repertory page number 100, 503 you will find the rubric hiccup violent and for violent hiccup 
There are three drugs suggested, the prominent drugs for three mark drugs for violent hiccup, natrum muriaticum, nicolum and stramonium. Out of that, though I did not see the patient with the available information, I decided to give him natrum mur tenum potency. So, the interesting fact is that after the second dose of natrum mur, his hiccup reduced and the patient became apparently normal. But the same day evening, he had again few incidents though with a low intensity. Again natrum mur tenum was repeated in 2 hour interval, evening in 2 hour interval and he had a normal sleep without sedation in the room, hospital room not in the ICU. And later 14th onwards I suggested the patient to take natrum muriaticum tenum in water dose that is by putting 2 pills of natrum mur tenum into 2 ounce of alcohol water solution, shake it well and give 1 ta tablespoon full every 2 hourly for 2 days. And after 2 days the same dose was repeated 3 times a day for 1 more week. And the 15th 7 that means second day after giving natrum muriaticum the patient was discharged from the hospital and patient came and met me later and even today patient remained completely normal and doing his regular job. And this is a very interesting case where why the conventional modern medicine failed. The reason is they need a definite diagnosis to treat the patient, a clinical pathology is required. If it is functional there is no scope and there is no specific treatment. Try to give symptomatic treatment in modern medicine but they fail most of the time and it adds a lot of pain, pain and suffering to the patient. And the second case is a case of 34 year old male reported on 14 to 2017 and he was under medication for irritable bowel syndrome uh, associated with gastric ulcer at the fundus area. And this is he is suffering was for nearly 10 to 12 years and he had the beginning of problem at the age of 22 with the frequency of stools after every meal with a consistent loss of weight and his weight was reduced from 64 kilograms to 48 kilograms during the period. And with all the symptoms the patient was treated you can see the symptoms in the slide there you can find he had epigastric burning, aggravation after late meals, weight loss, appetite and thirst were normal whereas he had diarrhea after meat and fish, anxious and depressed hypochondriac with very clean and tidy habits, patient was very lean. Carcinosin for the patient first prescription was given carcinosin 1 m and which was in a water dose in a 2 ounce bottle 3 pills of carcinosin 1 m 15 drops 3 times daily and it was given for 1 month. And carcinosin was given in 14 to 2017 and patient was taken 15 drops 3 times daily and he had follow up for the remaining 4 months and first 2 months carcinosin was repeated and the later 2 months nexomica LM1 water dose 15 drops 3 times daily was repeated and by 4th month he started gaining weight reasonably and his symptoms almost disappeared and patient improved very well. And the case number 3 is a 34 year old male patient reported with fibromyalgia with regular conventional medication for the last 2 years. And you can find the symptoms of the patient, he had the childhood problems of sleepwalking, bedwetting and his urine was intensely ammoniacal in smell. And he had fearful dreams and severe palpitation associated with. And during high school he had sleep paralysis and he was sleepy at afternoon every day in the school. He had generalized weakness. He could not sit on chair for long time. During his studies he used to lie down and read the books and write the notes. He was good in studies, completed his engineering graduation. So, he had many symptoms like bitter taste in the mouth, morning hours with nausea and vomiting of sour fluid and he had intense perspiration of palms and soles 
during the examination time. And he developed for the last 20 years with joint pains, pain in the calf muscles, upper and lower limbs pain and he had pain in the soles and calf with low backache. Pain as if a needle is inserted and his eyelids were heavy, he used to be hungry in the morning hours 2 to 4 am. So, there are so many symptoms like that which you can see in the slide and the prescription was given nitric acid LM1 15 drops 3 times daily for a month and patient disappeared after one month he never reported to me and you can see that nearly after 3 years patient reported back he had a recent business failure and he started developing set of symptoms which was earlier present and he was totally free from all the symptoms in the last 3 years. So, again he came back case was analyzed and for the fibromyalgia and the related symptom patient was treated with arsenic alp 0 bar 1 in water dose and later with argentum nitricum 0 LM1 in water dose and he became much better and stopped the treatment. So, these 3 cases illustrates the efficacy of homeopathy in the treatment of functional disorders where there is no definite pathology find, there is no definite cause effect relationship as far as the conventional modern medicine concerned, but as far as homeopathy is concerned there is a definite cause effect relationship that is the psychosomatic aspect of a human existence. And here the nanopharmacology of homeopathy is very relevant why I am coming to that point now. On the basis of this three, three cases I am going to explain about why homeopathy is highly relevant and curative in treatment of functional disorders. So, this is an intensive research which I started in 2011 11, and still the research is continuing and I studied more than 200 homeopathic drug samples in high resolution transmission electron microscopy, field emission transmission electron microscopy as well as in energy dispersion spectroscopy and dynamic light scattering technique. So, different technologies modern technologies are used to analyze the homeopathic drugs from 6 e to cm in centesimal scale and lm 1 to lm 30 in 50 millisimal scale. And in all these studies of 200 plus samples I concluded that homeopathic potencies contains nanoparticles of original drug material. And I would like to say that homeopathy is truly a nanopharmacology. Based on these studies, I have published 7 papers in international journals and I published 2 books which is related to this. One is the Ray of Civilization that is a recent book as well as the complete research work is concisely published in one work that is called Nanodynamics and which is recently translated into Spanish as well as into German languages and this book is available in the German language in a printed version. So, this book tells us the true story of human health and medical science and what is the relevance of homeopathy in that. So, these are few pictures of HR term images of aura metallicum you can see with 500 nanometer to 10 nanometer resolution. You can see plenty of nanoparticles of aurum in these dilutions. A chart from images of natrum muriaticum you can find in LM24 from 2 micrometer to 10 nanometer resolution. And in, your, in natrum muriaticum you will find millions of particle in every single micro drop of the solution. And another image of you can see is the ephesum images of hypericum 10m. You will find aggregates and single particles, isolated particles in the 200 nanometer resolution. So, these pictures will tell you what is the content of homeopathic drugs. They are nanoscale materials and in metal, metals and minerals you will find they are less than 10 nanometer in size and they go up to 1 nanometer. They are so precise, so sensitive and they are so subtle and they can directly penetrate into the human nucleus in the cells and they can directly interact with the human DNA that makes homeopathy much different and superior. And here I can find show you some of the picture uh, some of the recent publications one is extreme sensitivity of gene expression of human SH SY55Y 
neurocytes to ultra low doses of gelsemium sempervirens. Gelsemium is a commonly used homeopathic drug you know and here you will find fault changes of 56 selected genes and you can find with the analysis of gelsemium 2C. This is a published paper you can access it and you can read it and here you can find that the green bands, four green bands are expressive of down regulated genes with gelsemium 2C and the band 5 with the red color you can find it is up regulated genes. So, gelsemium 2C is capable of up regulating the genes as well as down regulating the genes. Now, we are coming to a point where we understood homeopathic drugs are nanopharmacology and homeopathic drugs up regulates and down regulates the genes. Now, this one minute video will exactly explain you where homeopathy works, how homeopathy works. This one minute video will tell you the genes are so delicate, so sensitive and they are sensitive to both internal as well as external impressions in the nature and they can modify the genes. If such a small stimuli can modify and mutate the genes, such a small stimuli from homeopathic drugs can repair them and that repair is what homeopathy does. The sensitivity and the minuteness of genes and its subtlety has to be understood clearly and medical science especially conventional medicine though know about the subtlety of genetic system try to hide it and try to keep it under the carpet because there is no solution for the uh, diseases at that point of origin. Therefore, they keep mum and they keep silent, but we need to talk about it because we have solutions and we have remedies which go to that extent and cure the patient. So, this video is highly illustrative for understanding what is happening at the DNA level. DNA is under constant attack from reactive chemicals and natural background radiation. Free radicals are the byproducts of normal metabolism in human cells. Seen here as bright particles, they sometimes react with DNA and cause chemical changes. Radiation can also affect DNA. For example, ultraviolet light from the sun can cause harmful chemical changes in the DNA of skin. These changes can lead to kinks in the DNA that prevent genes from being correctly read or deletions that alter the type of protein produced. Thanks to constant biochemical repair work, most mutations are corrected before they have any effect. But in rare cases, mutations can accumulate and this can give rise to diseases such as cancer. Let us come to the point the human body is not a gross structure as we think. The gross structure of human body is composed of nanostructures and the functions of human body is regulated at nanometer scale. I said DNA or RNA or enzymes or receptors, antigens, antibodies, everything operates at nanometer scale. So, medical science need to accept this intercellular reality of life. The current modern medicine stands on the biomolecular model proposed by Virchow and later advanced by Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch on the basis of discoveries in bacteriology. This all happened before the discovery of DNA in 1953. So, the conventional modern medicine is a system of medicine which is created much before the discovery of true basis of existence of human being that is the DNA. Therefore, you understand and we can see that there are glaring discrepancies in the understanding of the disease of the modern time today and the treatment which is offered in conventional medicine. So, now we realize biomolecular and cellular theories are outdated 
where are the na where is the nano pharmacology and epigenetics is coming into the forefront and to the reality of existence and homeopathic nanoparticles are capable of modifying these genetics at its root therefore the epigenetics of nano pharmacology of homeopathy is highly important for the cure of diseases and i am sure this is going to be the defining point for the health of humanity in the years to come and here the facts are very simple the genetic basis of biological existence is well known to us after the genetic decoding in 2000 we are very sure about the human existence is based on the genes tissues organs and systems are grown out of the pluripotent stem cells and here the gene regulation as we know that every cell contains 30000 genes and around 30000 genes every organ and tissue has specific genes activated they are switched on and the remaining genes are switched off they don't function in that particular organ so this basic reality is what should take us to the treatment of diseases rather than the chemical industry of modern medicine so the current mechanistic model of conventional biomolecular medicine is practically outdated theoretically outdated and fundamentally outdated therefore it needs a complete revision and a complete formulation of a new ideology and as we know our genetic system has more than or close to 100 trillion cells and the DNA has coiled and kept in the, in the nucleus of the every cell is almost having 2 meters length. So the total DNA of a human being is as long as double the diameter of solar system. It is almost 20 billion kilometers long and each DNA in one cell, one nucleus can, is having almost 3 billion base pairs. This is a complex coding which we are working on and this complex coding is the basic potential of human existence, both the qualities as well as the liabilities, uh, the, I mean the sickness. So the conventional biomolecular medicine which is a dominant around the world in the last 70 years is good for life saving in accidental and emergency conditions. Frankly speaking, it is a medicine in the war field. It is not a medicine to cure any chronic disease or any functional disease. But this model we are trying to replicate in all functional and chronic diseases which are originating from the genetics is a complete failure. And this failed model has to be understood and has to be modified. This is based on the political decision in America happened in 1910 by the report of Abraham, Abraham Flexner as well as the basis of need of objectivity and predictability in the science proposed by Descartes in 16th century and it was perfected in the physics by Newton. And that concept has percolated into the conventional medicine and which codified by the Virchow in 1858 as well as Pasteur and Koch in the later years. And it was all perfected by the discovery of antibiotics, especially the penicillin by Alexander Fleming. They all helped to contain infectious diseases but not any chronic diseases or any functional disorders. So, this failed model which is always proposing started with the antibiotics, then we started with anti-diabetic, anti-hypertensive, anti-tumor, anti-allergic, analgesics, antipyretic, all these anti-drugs, the whole concept is fun functionally wrong, philosophically wrong and also practically wrong because we are not curing any diseases through this method. So, the nanopharmacology of homeopathy is most relevant in the treatment of all the diseases. As we know that the existential reality of human beings started from gross matter by the physics of Aristotle, then later the physics advanced through Newton, but even then it was a gross matter related principles. But Einstein converted everything 
and modified the physics into duality of matter and energy. But modern medicine conventional therapies still stands on the Newtonian gross laws and it is not going into the next stage. So, the Cartesian mechanistic model which defined the biological existence of human being by dividing the body and mind into separate entities. But Descartes proposed psychophysical parallelism, but when it is translated into the conventional science of today, mind is totally ignored the completely the mechanistic model for the organ specific human existence is promoted, proposed and propagated. We have reached even or organ transplantation, but there is no integration between the reality of existence that is the mind and body unity that is a holism truly. As the DNA coding is the basis of human health, disease, existence and termination of life, the treatment also has to be accordingly. That is why now I propose the idea that homeopathy is the personalized nano medicine and a homeopath when go through individualization of a patient, he will take the genetic blueprint of every individual for treatment. And this genetic blueprint is the basis of prescription of homeopathic nanopharmacology which is capable of genetic modification, genetic modulation in curing the diseases. This makes homeopathy superior true science and the science for the future. Thank you so much for giving me the time and listening me. Once again I thank you all.